Previous videos in this, in this series have discussed parametric statistical tests, like the t-test or ANOVA, um, which require the data be normally distributed. So you can use graphical methods, like a histogram, as you've done before, to assess that assumption. But what if your question that you have specifically involves testing whether data follow a normal distribution or not? Well, the Shapiro-Wilk test is designed for that purpose. A first, a quick description of, of something called QQ, or quantile-quantile plots. Uh, they're actually related to the Shapiro-Wilk test, as, as you'll see in a second. So these plots have the actual data on the y-axis, the, the sample quantiles, um, with the values ordered from smallest to, to largest. The x-axis shows the expected or the theoretical normal quantiles. So a, a quantile is just a, the, a fraction of points smaller than a, a given value. Um, so the, the x-axis is what you would expect for a normal distribution with the same mean and standard deviation as the data. So if the data are normally distributed, the points here should follow a, along this straight line, especially in the middle of the distribution. The tails where the data is kind of sparse is, is a little less important. So it turns out that the slope of this line is actually the standard devi deviation of the normal distribution. Um, so straight lines mean, a, mean that it's, it's close to a normal distribution. If the line is, is curvy, the line of points, uh, it does not fall along that straight line, it, then it's not a normal distribution. So this is another good way of assessing your data to determine whether parametric tests like the t-test or the f-test or ANOVA are, are reasonable to do. But the Shapiro-Wilk test is a formal test of the null hypothesis that one sample is drawn from a normally distributed population. So because the normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution, you can only use this test on univariate continuous data. So the test calculates a statistic called W. Um, and it's, so the numerator of this equation here, the sum of AI times I, XI squared, so that sum is basically the slope of the QQ plot, the slope of the observed data um, versus the expected values from a normal distribution. It's normalized to a constant and, and whatnot. Um, so basically, yes, this slope is the, this is the slope of the QQ plot uh, squared. And so if the data follows a normal distribution, this value here, the slope of the QQ plot squared, um, should be an estimate of the population variance, this sigma squared, but only if the distribution is normal. So the denominator is also an estimate of population variance, and it's, based, it's just the sum of squares. So therefore, if our null hypothesis is true, and the data are actually normal, w should equal 1, because the top and the bottom of this equation are both estimating the same thing. And so w's values less than 1 um, may indicate a significant difference from normality. But we also have to consider whether that difference is more than we might expect for a small random sample drawn from a population. Right? It should be 1, but we have a, we have a random sample, so it just randomly might be less than 1. So the p-value is the probability of finding a w statistic at least as small as observed if the null hypothesis is true. And Shapiro and Wilk, when they came up with the test, actually calculated the p-values empirically by simulating a whole bunch of normal distributions. So a couple cautions. First, the test can run into problems if your data contain many equal values. There are other tests of normality, which we won't cover, and you can check out if and some of them might perform better in this situation. Um, the test also has little power to reject the null hypothesis when the sample size is small, and it's very likely to reject the null hypothesis if even for, sorry, it's very likely to reject the null hypothesis even for tiny differences from normality when the sample size is large. But these two are, are typical problems of significance testing in general, so as always, make sure to assess the real-world importance independent of the statistical significance. Also, uh, make sure to remember that a large p-value, p-value greater than 0.05, only means that you are unable to reject the null hypothesis. It doesn't prove that distribution is normal. In fact, technically, with this type of statistical testing, you can never prove that you have a normal distribution, just that it's not significantly different from normal. And I will also note that you shouldn't use the Shapiro-Wilk test 
to assess normality for a t-test or not. If you want to know, is my data good enough for a t-test, um, the Shapiro Weld test is, uh, is far too sensitive for that purpose. Many data sets that fail the Shapiro Wilk test that are significantly different from normal are perfectly fine for a t-test or for ANOVA. So use histograms or use QQ plots instead. The Shapiro Wilk test function in R, Shapiro.test, is about as simple as R functions get. You just provide it a single numeric vector as the one argument called x here. The output is also pretty minimal. It just gives you the test name, the W statistic, and the p-value. And you should report both of those values when summarizing your results. Get the W statistic, the p-value, and actually, although I didn't do it here, you should list the test that you did because there are several different tests for normality. So make sure to also mention that you performed a Shapiro-Wilk test.